Okay, you know what time it is. Time for a review. So, I have here these fine color alcohol-based markers that I got off of Amazon. They were very inexpensive and said that they had a brush tip. And from the picture, it sort of looked like they had a brush tip. Um, but we're gonna find out what the alcohol is like and if it has a brush tip. This is the whole set as far as I'm aware. And it's a pretty good size set too. Right, quite a lot of colors. Definitely enough to get started with anyway. <laughs> so, let's see. I guess, let's get cracking. And of course, first up is all the swatches. Now the brush tip does actually look promising on these. It does look like a Copic brush tip. So we'll see how the, the alcohol ink formula is and see if the brush is as good as it looks. Oh, even like on Copics, they have this gray bar that indicates which end is the brush tip. Wow, I'm actually impressed by these. Holy crap, I am really impressed by these colors. I, I can't, like, wow, these markers really feel, they even sound like Copics. When you color with a Copic marker, it makes this sort of um, squeaky noise almost. These make that sound even. I, I'm so far really impressed by these. The colors are vibrant. The brush tip feels just like a Copic using it. All of the colors worked except for one, and this one, I'm pretty sure the reason it didn't work was somehow the chisel tip cap had come off in the bag, so it must have just dried at some point. But I'm not mad at that. Out of all these colors, one doesn't work, whatever, it's a fluke. But wow, these markers, if these do as well in all the other areas, I think we may have found a Copic dupe. Okay, so first up is the bleed test, and yeah, they bleed pretty badly. You'll definitely want two sheets of card behind this, at least, to avoid staining your work surface. Next is blendability. I went with the standard red, orange, yellow to test the gradient capabilities, and I have to say I'm not mad at these at all, especially after the ink dried. It's not perfect by any stretch, but it's a very serviceable gradient. Next I went with coral pink and green to see about a gradient between complementary colors. And even though it was a less compatible pair of colors, it didn't really take much work at all, which was great. Also this combination made me think of a watermelon. To 
test if a light color would push back a dark one, I went with black and then a light ice gray type color. And it worked pretty well, though the tip of the light color did pick up the dark ink on the page, which means that touch blending should be an option, and the tip cleaned off pretty well, so they shouldn't stain too badly if you clean them immediately. I went with purple for a colored pencil gradient, and it blends out pretty well without much back and forth, so they're definitely compatible with colored pencil enhancements, at least the Faber-Castell and Prismacolor. Notably, the Prismacolor did do a little better than the Faber-Castell as far as blending. For line variation tests, the tips held up quite well. Even after pressing to make wide lines, it went back to the thin lines quite easy. So the tips are durable. There was no colorless blender, so for the reactions I ended up using my Copic colorless blender, and that worked fine, though it did take a bit of work for the clear to lay down. No reaction or smudging with water, so these wa markers are water fast, which is good to know, so you could watercolor over them without fear of any bleeding. As for acetone and alcohol, I accidentally spilled the acetone again with the dropper that I have. I really need to get better droppers for these tests, I guess. Uh, as for the alcohol, there wasn't really any noticeable reaction. And now for the speed paint. Uh, once again, tested smudging with the six fine liners I've been using for all these tests. Pepper Castell, Sacra Pigma Micron, India Ink, Stedler, and Zebra Signing Pens, and Copic Multiliners. When lined before coloring, these markers didn't really smudge at all with the Sakura Pigma Micron, and they only smudged a little bit with Faber Castell, Copic Multiliners, and Zebra Signing Pens. However, they did smudge pretty noticeably with India ink and Stedler, and as per usual, I always line the, pa line the piece in the section that's lined before coloring, and then wait half an hour for the ink to set and dry before. So it's not because the liners were wet, it was because of the actual ink in the liners. The markers blend and layer nicely, though I would advise being sure you erase very well before coloring because they did not play well with the lead in my mechanical pencil. The lead smudged a lot and stained the tips of the lighter colors a little bit. All in all, these markers did great. I was really impressed with them, especially for the price. They were less than 90 cents per marker. 
Stay tuned for the scoring rubric at the end. Please like if you're as excited about these inexpensive markers as I am, and subscribe for more reviews in the future. Let me know in the comments if there are any brands of alcohol markers you want me to try in future reviews, and I will catch y'all later.